So the exam has a strong emphasis on Microsoft Active Directory and AWS Directory services. So I really want to make sure that we both understand what this is, because I think it's quite complicated, especially if you're not from a Microsoft background. And I want to make sure you choose the right answer at the exam when, you when a question or two comes up on this topic. So what is Microsoft AD? It's found on any Windows server that has something called AD Domain Services. And it's going to be a database of objects, would it be user accounts, computers, printers, file shares, security groups, and it's going to be a centralized way for a security management, creating new accounts, assigning partitions, all in your Windows and Microsoft environment. And the objects, the users, the accounts, the printers, everything, they're going to be grouped together and organized into something called a tree. And as the name indicates, a group of trees is called a forest. So. What do we have Microsoft AD? For example, we have a domain controller that knows that John is the username and password is the password, which is not a very strong password, but anyway. And we have other machines, Microsoft machines, connected to this domain controller. The beautiful thing is that now one can use John password of, on any of these machines to connect and the Active Directory will check the login itself. So that allows us to synchronize sort of all these logins across the domain controller. That is something very, very simple, uh, simplified as well. Don't get at me if I don't do this exactly perfectly for the Microsoft AD, but this is at a high level, providing you an idea of how Microsoft AD works. So now what is ADFS or Microsoft AD Federation Services? It provides single sign-on across applications. So that means that it provides you single sign-on across your console, your Dropbox, your Office 365, or anything that supports ADFS. So what does it look like? We've seen this before, okay? But this is our user connecting to ADFS. ADFS will be authenticating the user with your Microsoft AD, so we'll be checking the login. And then ADFS will return a response that will be passed to AWS and exchanged for a token with STS and will be getting access to the management console, okay? We'll see how SSO in the future enables us to do this even more uh, easily. Okay, so now let's get into AWS directory services. We have three flavors, and this is a managed service by AWS. So the first one is called AWS Managed Microsoft AD. As you can expect, it's going to be a Microsoft AD in the cloud. So you're going to be able to create your own AD in AWS, manage users locally, and it has support for MFA. You will have to establish a trust with your on-premise AD, and we'll see what that trust looks like if you want to have some kind of connection between your on-premise AD and your AWS Managed Microsoft AD. So let's have a look. Here in this diagram, we can see that the Managed AD is connected to the on-premise AD through a trust, and it supports MFA, and so the users can authenticate on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side. Then we have Microsoft AD, uh, so we have AWS Directory Services AD Connector. So I wish they named things differently, but anyway. So this is a proxy to redirect your queries from the cloud into your on-premise AD. And the users, therefore, they're only managed in one place, which is the on-premise AD. So in this case, the authentication goes to the AD connector, which is a proxy, and it gets proxied back onto the on-premise AD to get the response. So in the first case with Microsoft Manage AD, we had two places where the users were defined. They were defined on-premise and in the cloud, and there was some trust between the two. But with the AD connector, they're only defined on-premise, and we've defined a proxy to access that on-premise AD directly from the cloud. Finally, we have Simple AD, which is not Microsoft AD. It's an AD-compatible API. It's called Samba, and it's managed in AWS, but it's standalone, and it cannot be joined with an on-premise AD. So in this case, with Simple AD, it's a cheaper alternative. It doesn't have as much capability. It doesn't support MFA, for example. It cannot be, join it cannot be joined to uh, AWS services such as SQL Server and so on. But it's going to be simpler, cheaper, and maybe a good solution based on the questions you get. So we have three kinds of directory services, and I think they're quite clear, the differences, but I really want to go deep dive into each of those to make it very, very clear as to how they're different. So with AWS Managed Microsoft AD, you're going to be deploying Microsoft Active Directory within your VPC. So here's what it looks like. We have two AZs, and we'll have two AD Domain Controller, or ADDC, deployed in two different AZ for high availability. And now we're going to be able to create EC2 Windows instances, and we can deploy traditional applications on these instances, for example, SharePoint, 
or we can do something called seamless domain join from your Amazon EC2 instances in multiple accounts and VPC directly onto your domain controllers. This is a feature directly coming out of the managed Microsoft AD. And finally, we have integrations. So if we deploy a managed Microsoft AD in the cloud, we can use it seamlessly integrated with RDS for SQL Server, workspaces, quick sites, and we can even create SSO to provide access to third-party applications. And I have another diagram showing you this in a second. This directory, so the managed Microsoft AD, can be a standalone repository in AWS, or it can be joined to your on-premise AD, and we'll see how to join it in a second. The multi-AZ deployment is going to be two AZ at minimum, but in case you want to increase your scaling and your availability, you are able to add more domain controllers. So in this example, I'm adding two more domain controllers, so that's four ADDC, and we have increased availability. Finally, this looks like RDS for Microsoft AD, so you have automated backups if you need to. Bottom line is, using Microsoft Manage AD, you can integrate with your services, have seamless join of your EC2 Windows instances, and you have multi-AZ deployment. Now, let's have a look at the integrations in depth. So your Manage Microsoft AD DC is in the middle, and it can get integrated with your on-premise Active Directory using something called Two-Way Forest Trust, and we'll see this in a second in the next slide. It can also integrate with a bunch of AWS services. So most importantly is RDS for SQL Server, but also workspaces, quick sites, connect, work docs, and single sign-on. And with single sign-on that we'll see in the future lecture, we have access to more SAML business applications such as GitHub, Box, Dropbox, Office 365, and so on. Finally, your traditional Active Directory applications, such as your .NET apps, your SharePoint, and your SQL Server that you deploy on EC2 instances, can obviously be integrated with that Active Directory that's managed by AWS. So, what do you remember out of it? That is the, going to be the most integrated with AWS offering from directory services. Now, something I want to highlight is how to connect this to your on-premise Active Directory, because that is going to be extremely important going to the exam to understand this subtle subtlety. So you are able to connect your on-premise AD to AWS Manage Microsoft AD. And for this, you need to set up a direct connect, and this will going to be DX in this course, or a VPN connection between the two. So we have your on-premise and your VPC, and we have set up a connection between these two. And so we have our on-premise Microsoft AD, which manages its own user on-premise, and you have AWS Manage Microsoft AD. This is going to also be managing its own users on AWS. And so you can set up three kind of forest trust. The first one is one way, when we have AWS trust on-premise. The second one is the other one way, which you have the on-premise trust AWS. And finally, you have something called two-way forest trust, where they both trust each other. And so that means that you can access one from the other and vice versa. So let's have a look. We have trust this way and trust that way. And so that means that we have a two-way forest trust. And the important thing to understand here is that this forest trust is going to be different than synchronization. So replication is not something that is supported by AWS Managed Microsoft AD. And so that means that their users are living independently on the two different Microsoft Active Directory but thanks to this forest trust, they're able to talk to each other in case one user is missing from one and ask the other DC, hey, do you think you have that user because I trust you? So very important to understand that distinction. So your traditional Active Directory app can connect to on-premise. Your EC2 instances can do seamless domain join onto your Microsoft Manage AD. But now because we have set up a two-way forest trust, your traditional Active Directory app, in case it's trying to request a domain that belongs to AWS, thanks to the trust, it's able to go all the way and check the user on the right-hand side. So this is the whole idea behind two-way for us trust. You don't need to know that level of detail in the exam, but hopefully that gives you a much better idea of what is a trust between your on-premise and your online on AWS uh, Microsoft AD. So now let's talk about a bit more solution architecture because we have to get into those and they can be quite complicated. But say you want to have your Microsoft AD that's on-premise replicated on AWS for minimizing latency. So for example, we want to say, okay, we want to have a replica of the on-premise AD on AWS because if somehow the direct connect 
or the VPN goes down, then we still want our users to have connectivity and function correctly. So we also need to be establishing trust between these ADs. So what does it look like? Well, we have our on-premise Microsoft AD with one domain, and we have the VPC AWS Managed Microsoft ADDC with another domain. The only way to set up some kind of replication is for you to deploy Active Directory on an EC2 Windows instance, and you will have to set up replication. And by setting up this replication, we'll have a replica of our on-premise Microsoft AD onto our VPC, which will help uh, minimize latency and also have a disaster recovery strategy. And finally, we can set up a two-way forest trust between our EC2 instance and our AWS Managed Microsoft ADDC in this own VPC. So this is the kind of solution architecture that will be asked from you at the exam. So that's why it's really important to get the basics done first and then talk about these little interesting twists on solution architecture. Okay, so that's all for AWS Manage Microsoft AD. Now we have AD Connector, which is much simpler. So it's going to be a gateway, so a proxy to redirect your request to your on-premise Microsoft Active Directory. There's no caching capability, no MFA, the users are solely managed on-premise, there is no trust being set up, and you need to have VPN or Direct Connect. And so it doesn't have this integration with SQL Server, it doesn't do seamless joining, it can't share directory, so this is something a bit more basic. And hopefully the exam will be very clear if you need AD Connector, that is some kind of directory uh, proxy. But AD Connector, in case the connection goes down, well, it's basically useless. So how does that work? Well, we have a Direct Connect or VPN connection between these two things and with AD Connector being set up. And so in case our users connect through the AD Connector, the AD Connector will be smart enough to go all the way to the Active Directory to proxy the authentication and get back the login back to our users. Okay, so this is how it works and there will probably be a, bit, a bit more latency in this uh, case. Finally, you have Simple AD, which is going to be very inexpensive Active Directory and it's going to have the most common directory features. It will support joining of EC2 instances, managing users and groups, but it won't support multi-factor authentication. It will not support the integration with RDS SQL Server. It will not support SSO, and it's only for small uh, amount of users, so 500 users up to maybe 5,000 users, depending on the tier you want to use. It's powered by SAM before, and it's compatible with Microsoft AD in terms of the API, but it's a lower cost, low scale. It's only has basic AD capability, or add that compatibility, and you cannot set up a trust with an on-premise Microsoft AD. So that's it. Obviously, the most important one is going to be the first one I described, but now you have the three options of directory services, and hopefully there's a bit more clear which one to choose